faith and your belief. That definitely comes through. Good. Thank you very much for saying Do that. you ever give it to your wife and she gives it back and says, are you kidding? <laughs> or does she think you're wonderful? Oh, she's 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 a lawyer. My wife's yeah. a lawyer, so she's. I don't know if I need to say anything else. You she's, can't say that. She'll be like, um, okay, you, you know, why why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? I'm like, wait, wait. Can you start on the positive before you start <laughs> That's this? I tell my husband three positives and one kick in the butt. Yeah. So um, she's she's um, my biggest fan, but my biggest critic as well. So she helps push me to that next level. Mm -hmm. She's con she doesn't give me any slack because I'm her husband. She'll say, good job. This is great. And she reads voraciously, so mm -hmm. she's, and she's got um, a lawyer's mind, so she's like dissecting this, you know, left and right. So she's she's very supportive, but she pushes me to the next. Good. Level. So when you hand it into the editor, you really can sit back and relax because yeah. you've already had it. Yeah. Comb through better than their yeah. editors can. After my wife's been through it, generally the editing editing process, they line me up with about three or four different editors. It's mostly grammatical stuff, mm -hmm. small things. Um, so she definitely helps polish it, which I need. <laughs> <laughs> now, who do you like to read? Uh, um, I've been reading a lot of uh, nonfiction American history um, lately. I have grew up reading uh, Tolkien and Lewis, which were... Uh, we're a young men here who took Tolkien's voyage. Really? Backpacked, climbed really? the mountain, and then at the end of it, he actually got to meet a man who showed him the original scrolls. Really? Yeah. In England, through Oxford, in that area. Yeah, so I, I grew up reading a lot of Lord of the Rings, Chronicles That's of all deductible, you know, to write the <laughs> That's book. That's true. It's research. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So I grew up reading a lot of that, and I, I always wondered what resonated with me about stories like that or Star Wars that had that, and it was always that spiritual component. And then it was decades later that I figured out Tolkien and Lewis were both devout Christians, and that mm -hmm. spiritual component would... You know, comes through. It resonated with me because I read a lot of fantasy books growing up, but something about those novels kind of um, resonated with me. But um, lately, I you know I read the Bible. I read a lot of nonfiction, um, uh, but I can't think of any authors off the top of my head. Oh, all. that's quite all right. You'd be offended if you didn't yeah. m mention them all anyway. Yeah, but you do like history, and yeah. that that comes through in the book just enough. You know, you, you knew your area. Yeah. You you knew, so if someone in New Hampshire picks it up, they're going to feel like you're writing about their area. Do you hear from people who have read it? Yes, I have. Mm. And, and positive? Yeah, it's, it's positive. <laughs> um, and that, it's funny you mentioned New Hampshire because I really, when I write, in, um, like in my story Cape Ann, there's a lot of stuff that happens in Boston. There's a lot of stuff that happens in Cape Ann. And with this, there's a lot of stuff that happens in New Hampshire. I want to make sure if someone from New Hampshire reads it, they don't cry foul. Like, you got this wrong, you yeah, got this wrong. Because they do. You want they that get street you. cred. You yeah. want that street cred. Um, so I really kept that in mind that, like, if a park ranger reads this, they're going to, I don't want them to say his uniform's wrong or his dress uniform's wrong or the car he drives is wrong, or his responsibility is wrong. I took a little bit of liberties, but I stated that in the beginning. Like, for instance, Ransom Donovan is a throwback to, like, a bygone era. I've named him after two characters in my favorite Western, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, with Jimmy Stewart and uh, John Wayne. Mm -hmm. uh, Ransom uh, uh, st started in Tom Donovan, so I kind of blended the two. He's kind of a cowboy, so I gave him a single-action uh, Ruger Blackhawk uh, gun and a lever action rifle, which is really something a park ranger wouldn't have. You need a special um, uh, leave to, to to not have the standard issue guns up there. But I researched it. It's, it's kind of like a music classic music. You they say you can break the rules, but you have to know the rules. So I I learned all the rules and I stated at the beginning I took a few liberties with it. So so now they're giving me a signal that you're ready to read. Okay. And you're going to read us a passage, but you've got to print it. You don't yes. have to read an ebook. I'm yes. not sure that's fair. So we'll be right back. And Jonathan, Jonathan or John? John. John will read. Okay, so to set this scene up, uh, this is Chapter 7. Ransom and his partner, uh, who's kind of a comic relief, his name is Ross, just uh, went and investigated a um, shelter out in the woods, and there was a shootout. They're coming back to their vehicles, um, and they're greeted by government agents at their vehicles to surprise them. 
Two agents rushed at Ross and threw him to the ground. One agent pushed his knee into his back while another took off Ross's AR-15, his sidearm, and his belt. What do you think you're doing, Ransom shouted. A tall, thin, elderly man with a finely trimmed white beard, dressed in a black suit, stepped from out from one of the SUV's passenger doors. He walked up to Ransom, shut the motorcycle off now. Ransom immediately shut the bike off and placed it on the kickstand. As soon as he stepped off the bike, two agents threw him to the ground and gave him the same treatment as Ross. Ransom spit out dirt and struggled to turn his head over to face Ross. Are you okay? I think so, but one of these guys whispered in my ear that he liked my cologne. The man in the suit walked over and kicked Ross in the stomach. You think this is a game? Ransom shouted, you're kicking a law enforcement officer. The man walked over and knelt down beside Ransom. He was close enough to whisper in his ear, but instead he shouted, how do I know you're not some jerk playing dress up? Until I verify your IDs, you're staying cuffed. Ross coughed a few times and then said, anyone ever say that you look like a skinny Santa with that beard, albeit an angry Santa? The man went over to kick Ross again. Just as his foot swung back, a shell came from one of the SUVs. These two check out. The bearded man paused before he continued on and kicked Ross in the stomach. Ross shouted in pain. Skinny Santa turned to a masked agent, release them. Ransom got up first and then helped Ross up. As he walked Ross over to his vehicle, the bearded man said, you have five minutes to clear the area before I have you arrested or shot. He turned to his agents, let's move out. Six masked men led by Skinny Santa headed into the forest in the direction of the campsite. To Ransom, it seemed like they moved with confidence, like people who had made the trek before. Two agents remained with the three black SUVs. Ransom helped Ross into his SUV. One of the agents came over and tossed Ransom's backpack and their unloaded firearms into the back seat. What the heck was that, Ransom whispered after the agent walked away. My dear Ransom, I believe you stumbled onto something really bad, Ross said, still holding his side. Why didn't I listen to my wife and become a postman? Who did you tell you were coming out here? Just left a message at HQ, he said, holding his side. Ouch, I think Sa Santa cracked a rib. You guys need to leave now, said one of the agents. Ross winced as he started up the SUV. We can discuss this later. You gotta learn to keep your wisecracks to yourself, Ransom said. It doesn't pay to be the funny guy. Or the best looking either, Ross, Ross said, forcing a smile before he winced again. I'm burdened with both. No. If that doesn't wet their whistle, <laughs> I don't know what would. Well done. Thank you. In your attention to detail, if anybody was going to pick it apart, it would be right there. Yeah. In, in the, and I thought arrogant was the word. Yeah. That's what came through. Um, very well done. Thank very you. well done. Thank you. Appreciate you bringing it to us and making me learn something new. Painful as it is. And we would invite you to come back. I would love to. And we will tell everybody to look for it on ebook, listen to it on audio, and in print maybe in six months. I hope so. That's what I'm hoping. Yep. And then, but we won't know what the cover looks like, so we just. It'll be the same as the, as we the e cover. We just have to remember John Thiel. And I won't forget that name. <laughs> Thank you much for coming. Thank you so much nice for having me. Nice to have had you here. I really appreciate it. Let us know how, what you hear from your premiere appearance. <laughs> I don't know about that, sure. <laughs> That's off the shelf. Books on tour. Veronica Andrews. Bye.